Hey, what's up guys? Slicker Slickmoff here, back again with another video. Uh, I should be writing a paper right now, but here I am laying in bed <laughs> talking about Justice League. So let's get right into it. And I want to give my thoughts on the review embargo for the Justice League film. One thing that people are a little concerned about is that the review embargo is tentatively announced to be one day before the release of the film, which I believe comes out on November 17th, really on the Thursday before, so November 16th. So the review embargo is on November 15th officially. Now, some press people have already seen the film from what I understand, but they could not actually post about the film and give their thoughts on it in their formal review until the review embargo lifts. This is in direct and stark contrast to Marvel with Thor Ragnarok, who has a two-week um, review embargo two weeks before the film itself. So a lot of people are saying that this is potentially indicating that WB is not confident in their film, and I want to explain why this doesn't really concern me as much, and, and most prominently, the most prominent piece of evidence or reason why I'm not that worried about it is because there was actually a tentative um, embargo date for Wonder Woman that was also one day before the film itself came out for Wonder Woman, which was a great film, and WB, I think, had confidence in that movie, and it paid off for WB. So what I'm saying is that WB doesn't necessarily have a strong like causality between a movie they know is going to suck and we're going to put that like a, a you know a quick embargo date right before the film so there can't be a lot of buzz for weeks and weeks about how much it sucks. I think that this makes sense too. Okay. In the case of Wonder Woman, by the way, they did actually ultimately push it back, so we'll see if they do that with Justice League. And if not, I can see why some people would be concerned. But also at the same point, I feel as though I totally understand why WB would not want reviews of their film running around for weeks and weeks because they released what they were very confident in and thought was a good movie. I feel like with, with WB, of course, the, the rumors were there was a standing ovation when Justice League, um, or excuse me, when Batman v Superman was shown by Zack Snyder to the corporate executives. Uh, granted, that, that is comparable to parents standing and giving applause to their children and, uh, you know, the second grade play after their shitty recital and all the parents stand and clap. It's kind of the same idea. It's like, of course you're going to cheer. Um, with that being said, though, I do feel that they genuinely were confident in the movie and was, you know, they certainly weren't expecting a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. So my point is, I feel as though WB perhaps has felt burned by this process before with letting the reviews out too early. And they're just like, we're not going to screw with this again. This snake has bit us once before. We're going to keep our distance and just try to avoid this. And even if the film reviews are good, they're all coming in a day or two before the movie comes out. And then that really gets the hype going for the film. That's sort of my thought on it is that it's not necessarily indicative that they're not confident in the movie. It's just a factor that we can maybe consider. I will say that putting the review embargo out two to three weeks before the movie comes out is generally a sign of confidence, but we've seen movies that are really bad actually have embargo dates listed like two to three weeks in advance. I cannot think of an example off the top of my head, but I do know for a fact there have been movies recently that are really, really bad and the embargo date was like way before the movie came out. So you would think like, oh, they're so confident. They want the reviews to get out there before the movie comes out. Not really. It really just depends on the studio and what they're tracking and do they want like a sudden influx of hype, you know, the week the movie comes out or do they want like a stagnant sort of like maintained aspect of hype, I guess what Thor Ragnarok is going for. So I really feel that it totally varies and the quality of the film is not necessarily something totally indicative of that entirely, but I do understand why people are concerned about it. So the main question that I want to answer in this video uh, to wrap it up is do I think Justice League will be good and where do I think it will land with the box office and where do I think it will land with Rotten Tomatoes. So in regards to the box office, I place Justice League in the 50 to 70 percent range. I know that that's a very <laughs> big difference. I don't think it will hit like 20 percent. I do feel that shortening the film is going to help it, and also from what Jeremy Irons, who plays Alfred, has said, it's going to be a much more concise, clear-cut film, easier to understand for the critics and casual audiences, which is really going to help. I do feel it's going to be, you know, those very heavy comic book films sometimes don't land well with the critics because they're not comic book fans, most of them. Most of them don't read comics, and, you know, they have no appreciation for who Steppenwolf is or anything like that. But then again, you could say the same thing for Thor Ragnarok and all the characters they're introducing that, you, you know, they don't really know about either. So, um, and, and to be fair, I don't really know about because I'm not a Thor reader. Um, a lot of the characters in, in Thor Ragnarok, not all of them, of course, I know Loki and, um, and, and among others, but, you know, some of the more existential, like, surrounding characters, like the main villain, I don't actually know the name of that character. But anyway, my point is this. 
I feel that Justice League is not going to be as loved as Wonder Woman, but I do feel it's going to land much better than BVS and even Man of Steel have done. I would not expect anything much higher than 70% because at the end of the day, it does look like a very CGI heavy action movie with lots of fighting and killing AI zombie bot things, parademons basically. I know they're not AI because it's live action, but you get what I'm saying. And um, I feel that some critics are going to equate this to like a Michael Bay kind of movie, unless it has the heart that we just haven't really seen from the trailers. I mean, the trailers have totally just shown the action side of it. Even the BVS trailers have shown sort of like the philosophical underpinnings of the movie and like deeper plot stuff. Whereas this movie is really like action clips for the trailers, right? So we haven't really seen the heart besides that Lois Lane scene where she sees Superman, stuff like that. So we'll just have to see about that. I feel like the more heart, the more critics will like it. And if it's just straight action, like an hour and 50 minutes of just slicing parademons, critics are gonna be like, oh, this is just Michael Bay's, you know, spin-off movie, which they don't like. Okay, so I feel that it will land on the 50 to 70% range. How much money do I think Justice League will make? I think it will make about $800 million, comparable to Batman v Superman. I feel that people are maybe overestimating the drive of Justice League. Now, Avengers, you know, the next Avengers, Infinity War, I, I feel will easily make $1.5 billion because people are already familiar with these characters. It's going to be a big event. They've got lots of comedy in it, which casual viewers tend to like. I am also looking forward to the movie, whereas Justice League is also stepping up the comedy in this film, which may resonate more with casual audiences. With that being said, I do feel that a lot of people are still going to feel that WB has a lot to prove, and unless the reviews really come out a lot higher than I expected, I feel that the movie's not going to make a billion dollars, but it can get close to there. It can maybe get in the 900 range. I'm still tracking, I say tracking as if I have any fucking reason to predict this, which I don't. Um, I, I'm still going to put it at around $800 million for my personal um, guess, because I sort of have gotten burned once before. We're like, oh, BVS is 100% going to make $1 billion. and of course it didn't. So we, we, it really needs to be well-reviewed, and even Wonder Woman, which had 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, only made about six or 700 so, let me know what you, what your guys' thoughts are on this video. Do I personally think Justice League will be good? I think I'm going to have a blast. I think I'm going to love the movie. Do I think that every critic will love the movie? Not necessarily, but um, I haven't really cared what critics have thought about these DC movies up to this point, and I'm not going to care for this movie either. So I'm looking forward to it. I think I'm going to really enjoy it. I think it will be, overall, a pretty good movie. You know, we're going to have to see what, what surprises they have for us. You know, those big surprises like Dark Side, Green Lantern, you know, Superman returning, how they incorporate all that in is really going to determine if this is going to be like a fun movie going experience or truly a historic, you know, experience for us DC fans. So hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. My name is Slick Moff. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know your thoughts on these movie discussion videos and what other content you'd like to see from me in the upcoming future. I've got a paper to write that I've been procrastinating. I think I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one as I get cracking on that, and I'll be sure to read all of your comments in this video as well. See you guys in the next one.